Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today we're checking out Resident Evil Revelations. Stepping into the 3DS this time, though we're not playing it on the 3DS. <laughs> Nobody's playing it on 3DS, Jim. Right, people play it on the 3DS. Yeah. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we're gonna get so many dislikes. Nah, whatever. We're gonna get that anyway. We debated whether we were going to include the Revelations games in this series since we wanted to look at the main. We felt it was worthwhile. Like, tied in stories from the main series, so... Yeah, it's technically between 4 and 5, even though it's, like, 3 minutes it actually references any of them, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, what 3 minutes they were. What a tie-in. Worth it. So, let's see what we think. Originally released to the 3DS in 2012, this was developed by Capcom and published by Capcom. Well, it was published by Nintendo in Europe, but <laughs> no one cares about them. It eventually came out on Windows, the PlayStation 3, the Wii U, the 360, the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. And all those were a ton of different Resident Evil, Revelations, Origins, Collections, blah, 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 blah. So when it came out on the 3DS, this was one of those games that really pushed the system early on. And actually led to it eventually getting that little nubby thumbstick because this actually needed a s attachment to it in order to play it with the dual stick control. It looked goofy as hell, but it was innovative for the system. Nobody cares! God damn it. I also missed out on it because I unfortunately broke my 3DS way too fast back in the day. So, we're gonna be looking at the Xbox One version which has updated graphics. It's better! Damn it! <laughs> the graphics. Full disclosure, before you hate on us too much, I was really thinking of this game in terms of every other Resident Evil. I wasn't fully aware that it first came out on the 3DS. With that being said, the ports all still manage to look pretty good. My general complaint is that the textures, the enemies, and a lot of the settings all just seem to repeat after a while. I love the general look of this, and using the, the abandoned ghost ship was something we hadn't seen before, and it brought us back to the horror roots that we love about Resident Evil. <laughs> Rai, wasn't Resident Evil gated on a ship? <laughs> Nobody played that, Jim. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so anyway, while this game may not have traditional zombies, and that's something Jim and I disliked about previous games, these ooze creatures are very zombie-esque. Sure, they're huge mutations and can come off a little too powerful, but they're still creepy as hell. The way they shamble towards you, there's just something about them that's very disturbing. And the way they leech onto you when they attack you, I don't know. It upped the horror for us, so right away, just from the general atmosphere, we had to give it more points. But once again, going back to our biggest complaint, the models and just the general textures of everything didn't really impress us that much. So at the end of the day, but <laughs> it's an upgrade of a 3DS game. Which is what I said at the beginning of this, Jim. Don't you fucking listen. Right, let me defend it. Ow. Go play with your nubs again. Don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> da -da 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 I don't get it. Small penis, Bri. Small penis. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, Jim is right, at least, about the fact that it's a port, but still... We couldn't give it more than the sevens I already mentioned, so when it comes to beer, I'm just going to give one for Jim and his little nub. Alright, the sound. Here's me sounding like a broken record, but the music in the game is good, very appropriate, but it's not exactly memorable. But here's one thing about it, and this is something that Resident Evil hasn't done in a really long time. It sets a really good spooky mood. It isn't like trying too hard to be spooky, it isn't trying too hard to be ambient, it's just almost perfect for what it's going for. And it, then there's a the little touches with the music where when they give you these jump scares here and there, you'll hear that random clang of a piano and shit like that. Classic horror movie tropes that they just got me. It's tried and true, but fuck me, it got a couple of spooks out of me. Did you poop your pants? A little, few times. And another thing where this game does really well, again, is the voice acting. You, you have Jill, Chris, and all the secondary characters. They... Again, it's just really well at voice acted, so kudos to all the actors in this. But the sound effects, and I want to say the voices for the enemies themselves, because it really plays... In One thing that was always a problem with Resident Evil is 
it didn't play enough into the in-between stage almost. Where either everyone's a full, shambling zombie who can't talk and just go bleh, or it's those weird Ouroboros last plagas monsters. But in this one, you have people in transition. So you get to hear people talking. You get to hear mutated bodies hanging off these giant monstrosities. You get to hear these last gasps of life and just the suffering of these people. And it does such a good job of foreshadowing, too. You'll hear enemies whining and crying or giving a couple different sayings in the background, you know, all echoey until you finally get up to where exactly they are, so you know shit's about to go down. I just really like the sound design in this game overall, so Brian gave it an 8 and I gave it a 9. And when it comes to beer, I'm going to give it two beers. One for that goddamn comms officer and his Mayday! Mayday! Ow, what? That was a terrible impression. It was a perfect impression. Too many of your impressions sound like that, Jim. Probably. And two, for Rebecca, because every time she comes out and just shrieks at you. Oh my god, it gets me. Like a boner? Actually, kind of, yeah. Damn it! The control. You know what? I'm just going to come out and say it. The control is perfect. I know none of you are going to believe me. It's a Resident Evil game. How is that possible? But because it's a Resident Evil game, and an action game, and a horror game, I was not expecting it to be as smooth as it was. However they figured this out, they simplified the third-person design scheme that Resident Evil 4 and 5 built up, and they just made it work so much better. The movement is easily the most fluid of any previous Resident Evil, as I said. The strafing back and forth, it's like they fully understood how to use an analog stick. And, and going along with the movement in general, this is one of those games where the swimming isn't absolutely awful. Still don't love the underwater levels, but at least I'm not complaining because the movement's terrible. You have a button that's mapped out to almost every part of your controller. So for example, you need only one button for the knife now, which is super convenient. You can pull out your Genesis and scan items with just one button. You're able to heal with one button. You're able to switch your weapons quickly like they did in 5. They just took all the little pieces that made the previous games good and improved upon it. This game, um, amongst any Resident Evil to this point, is the least amount of time I spent in a menu system, which I really appreciated. But if I was going to have one complaint about the control, it would be the new dodge mechanism that was implemented. You have to flicker the left analog stick while you're aiming, and you can somehow do it without. I'll be honest, that's something Jim and I just never really mastered. I kind of felt like it was flipping a coin if I ever was able to pull it off. And I'll be honest, half the time if I pulled it off, I just got really lucky. Because of that, I still kept, kept it at a 10. To me, the dodge was basically just a bonus that you did not need to complete the game. And Jim gave it a 9. Honestly, you will not find a Resident Evil game that controls better. And when it comes to beer, I'm not even going to add one. I love what they did with this game. The gameplay. It's weird with this game because I really want to say that this game for once did it right. This game, I want to say, for a Resident Evil game, perfectly combined a horror game with an action game. You have so many moments, especially early on in the game, where you're just going to be spooked and you're not even expecting it. Outside of just general jump scares, I mentioned it before, but the foreshadowing they have for events and the false flags and stuff like that, it just always builds this sense of dread in you that is really tough to fully describe without playing the game. But they just, it harkens you back to those old days of feeling kind of helpless inside this world around you that's falling apart. Now, interspersed through there are these sections where you'll be playing as secondary characters. And it's almost, not going to call it a shooting gallery, but it's definitely just more straight up action segments with a lot of hunters. And this is a segment that Bri really didn't like. But for me, it kind of felt almost like a little bit of a palate cleanse before going back into the horror side of it. So, I kind of enjoyed them as just like a little break from the constant tension. Early on in the game, you are so underpowered, but you can pick up all these items and different mod kits throughout the game to kind of fashion your weapons that you take with you, how you want to fit it to your playstyle. So you get, you know, snipers, automatics, shotguns, the usual kind of crap, but another thing this game does really well, somehow, is backtracking. Because, I'm going to guess because it was on the 3DS, and because that's why it's like, say, on a ship, so... It's not actually that huge of an entire world within this game, but the way that you 
go back and forth between parts that you've already seen hundreds of times before, but when you go back another time, you'll have a new skill, you'll have a new item, you'll have a new key, different ways to unlock different lock things or solve different puzzles or to get different items that you couldn't get previously. There's always just a reason to go back to somewhere that you were before, and there's always parts where you can be racking your head going, how the hell do I get this item, only for it to be abundantly cleared because of a major event later on down the line. And I just love the way how they just crafted, like you can just tell they spent so much time on the storyboard for this game. And then you also have, eventually you have New Game Plus, where you can go back and play through the game again, but this time keeping all the items you had picked up in the original game, but they throw way more monsters at you and it's way more tough. And then there's also the raid mode, which is kind of just like the old mercenaries mode where it's you have to go through levels and kill certain amounts of enemies and, you know, try to get the best times and survive. So that's always a nice little added plus. But just the amount of stuff that goes on in this game and just how well crafted everything is. It just really makes for a really good Resident Evil and horror experience in general. So Bri gave it an 8. I gave it a 9. I really did love this game. And when it comes to beer, I'm going to add one beer because... The goddamn ending ruined so many good character moments from the friggin' game, just so we could, spoiler alert, have a bit happier of an ending. God, that pissed me off. But that's a minor gripe aside. Wah. The originality I can keep quick because this game did manage to take us back to the, our horror roots, and other than the setting itself, it was a lot of things that we were used to. Like Jim mentioned, they might have improved on the sound and the ambient noises and the control, they made a lot better, but they didn't really offer much new. Other than the fact that you had the Genesis device that could scan items, it was a neat little way to really explore your environment that we hadn't previously seen. The raid mode itself isn't really different, it's just a different name, and it was basically things we've seen in the past. The only other part that, once again, it's new, but it's not really game-changing is the fact that this was the first Resident Evil to really be broken up in episodes. I know it's just a naming convention before every, you know, with Resident Evil 4 and 5 you had chapters, but with the episodes, they were smaller bits that you could get finished in 20 to 30 minutes on average, so it was a little bit more digestible for you to sit down, play an episode, put it back, put it down and come back and play later. So, with all that being said, we could still only manage to give this game a 4. We appreciate all these little touches, but really, they were just improvements on previously established norms that we were used to with all the other Resident Evil games. So, when it comes to beer, I still won't add any. I appreciate the improvements they did across all these games. Uh, when it comes to replayability, eh, some here. You get multiplayer options in the raid mode, so that's always cool. You get New Game Plus, which is always nice to have to give you reasons to go back and play through more and to give yourself a real challenge. And then you can always go through and try to give yourself better scores to get better points to unlock more stuff in the in-game stores. So, there's a lot to unlock there. There's different options for you to come back to, but it's not like you have the biggest reasons in the world to come back once you play it through once. So, we gave it fives. There's enough here to keep you wanting to come back for more, but you also don't really have to. And when it comes to beer, I'll just add one for just, damn, did they make New Game Plus hard. They throw a lot of shit at you. Overall, neither Jim and I really had many preconceived notions going into this, and I was very pleasantly surprised. This is honestly one of the most surprised I've been by a game that we've done in this entire site. Yeah, yeah, I I kind of was like, ah, shit, it'll probably be more action-y, it'll be whatever, and no, the horror elements, the control, the atmosphere, it was like, holy shit, this is like an old-school Resident Evil game just controlling better. Yeah, I honestly think that this is one of the most complete Resident Evil games. Like, hmm. if you know someone who's either never... If you're someone who's never played a Resident Evil game before, and someone's like, I want to know what the series is all about, but, like, it's kind of tough, because you would want to say, oh, play the classics, but for people in this day and age, you're not going to like tank control. Yeah. You'd say play the new ones, but they're not hard. I'd say this is that perfect in-between with all that. Like, if you're someone who's either never played Resident Evil before, or you've never liked Resident Evil... I would say just give this one a shot. Yeah, and honestly, we might have had a few gripes here and there and, and shit a little bit on the graphics, but for for modern consoles, if you can, get the HD remake. I had plenty of fun with it. It's a bit of a long game with 12 episodes, but once again, it's in manageable chunks. And it's it. only maybe 8 hours total, and then you can just add on more after the fact. Yeah. So when it comes to scores, I gave it a 7, Jim gave it an 8, 
And when we combine it all together, it comes out to a round eight, which is one of our, not one of our highest scores, but this is more in the realm of the original three Resident Evils and some of the ones we like the most. So there wasn't a lot to hate about this game. Yeah, the score probably could be higher, but it really just comes down to the muddier graphics. and Well, not muddier, but the more simplified graphics and just the repetitive nature of some of the levels. Some of the repetitive nature and the fact that it doesn't do anything... It, this is one of the ones that probably does the least really new, but it does everything right. Yeah, for sure. So, let us know what you think below, guys. I did this a lot during this video. That's what I did with this mother. <laughs> said it was quite a revelation. Oh! <laughs> Woo! Do you need one of these? Good night, everyone! <laughs> Till next time, guys. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> when it comes to beer pairing, I decided to go with the Ballast Point Brewing Company's Victory at Sea High West Barrel Age Porter. The original Victory at Sea was already a completely delicious beer. But for a game that really did such a great job with control and brought Resident Evil back to horror the way I liked, I wanted to give it something a little bit special. So, you're going to be pounding back a 12% beer, you're going to need to take your time. And with a game like this, you can save your sips for in between each episode. They won't take you very long, and you're going to want to let this beer last you all night long. So grab a few bottles, and try not to go down with the ship. But remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time, guys. Cheers.